Right, here is the scoop. It's been a weird one. I used to do the £5 CEX retro game challenge. I won't digress into what that is, but what it meant was I used to be in CEX looking at prices constantly. And it's been a while since I've been in one. And after the Leeds retro gaming market, Sarah and I went to CEX in Leeds and I noticed something hideous, actually. The price of especially cartridge-based retro games had skyrocketed. So it really got me thinking, and I'm going to roll some footage in Leeds, and then we're going to take a look at some of the games, compare it to eBay sold listings, and I'm also chucking in a Brucey bonus here because I reached out to some of my good friends that own retro game shops up and down the country, and I asked them, what would you sell a standard conditioned boxed copy of Conker's Bad Fur Day for on the Nintendo 64 in the relative shops. So I'm going to give you those answers. I'll tell you which shop each answer belongs to. It's not a competition between shops. It's merely to highlight um, what I think is becoming ridiculously expensive for cartridge-based retro games in CEX. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not against CEX. I'm not going to stop shopping in CEX and I will, if I see a bargain, buy video games, retro games from CEX. But we need to come together here because uh, I just feel it's just a bit of a, a bit of a minefield. So we're going to roll some footage from a couple of CEXs, including Leeds, that I've visited recently. You can make your own decision, then we'll switch it back to the game room um, do a bit of voiceover and we'll check out what some of our findings are. So without further ado, CEX Retro Gaming. Is it a rip-off? Do we need to be avoiding it? Do we need to make a stand on social media? Let's find out together. Here we go. I've not done voiceover for quite some time, so uh, bear with. We are in the Leeds CEX and in these next couple of shots you're going to get a pretty good swoop of the really good actually selection of retro games both console based and cd based retro games in fact if you were to cover the prices i would go as far to say is this is one of the better selections of retro games that i have seen in this chain for quite some time what we're going to do shortly is we're going to pick a select few of these titles and we're going to compare them to the average sold listings on ebay at the time of recording this video then we'll take a pop we'll take another look in another cex and then we'll talk about what some of the local retro game stores think and it might help you make your decisions on where to buy your retro games now i understand that not everybody has a local retro game store around the corner and for you, CEX might be your only access to these hard games. When I say hard games, I mean not emulating them, these tangible video games. So, like I said, a lovely selection, but quite shockingly, the prices have skyrocketed. And I want to really focus on just how much of a freaking joke CEX have become in. In fact, they seem to be doing a hell of a lot of prices on their eBay. Now, let's remember that eBay, love it or hate it, these are local businesses and CEX is a chain, but it seems to me like they're basing their prices on eBay, which I do think is a little bit freaking shady, if I do say so myself. The average price on eBay sold listings is 245 versus the 250 in CEX. Let's take another look at another game. We've got Metroid here on the GBA priced in at 70 quid. Now, granted, we don't know what the condition of the manual is. So this is not a science by any stretch of the imagination. But what I've done is I've added up all of the similar variants priced in here. Average on eBay at 72. You see where this is going. They are price pointing and I think this has gotten worse and worse and worse 
like I said in the intro, I have not been in CEX for quite some time. I've definitely not bought any retro um, and I've just noticed an insane price hike. Something has happened and we need to shout from the rafters. 147 here, um, slightly more expensive on average on eBay. Um, so again, if you really want to take it down, you know, you, I guess you can get some things a hell of a lot cheaper, but it's £7. It's still within that vicinity. Clearly, somebody in the marketing department is going through the sold listings, I believe, and taking averages and utilising that to, to make their price points. So... Uh, Stubbs, uh, Stubbs the Zombie, so original Xbox, this has dropped in price, 52 quid here in um, the uh, CEX, but massively cheaper if you go to eBay, so you can definitely save yourselves a couple of quid, you can save yourselves even more if you get the revamped version on the Xbox Series X. Now F-Zero GX, I might even do a stream of this over on my Twitch channel, 45 they had it up for in Leeds CEX and the average in here let's have a look and see what that is there's actually quite a few for sale on eBay or rather sold as we're looking at sold listings but the average on eBay is 38 quid so make sure you avoid CEX for the bulk of your retro games guys we'll dive over to another CEX and I will say the console prices in CEX recently are ridiculous. You'll see a Dreamcast very shortly. So you're talking a standard Dreamcast, no games, well over 100 quid. In fact, there was an NES console unboxed in the window, so really lovely, reacting with that bromine, getting plenty of sun damage, at 110 pounds. CEX, what is going on? We've, I mean, again, just bringing it back, there might be people watching this thinking, hey, we know CEX are really, really pricey, but I think videos like this will really help people to make a decision and just to review exactly where they want to get their retro games from. And the Sega Master System, 60 quid, a SNES Mini, 125, and here we go, a Sega Dreamcast, at 105 gamers what has happened why is this so ridiculously expensive i did my old school trick of asking if there was anything behind the till and i would always advise should you choose to go and buy your retro games at cx in fact anywhere make sure you always ask because 99% of the time there's like a, a kind of crate like this with plenty of stuff in but now it's time to take a look at what the retro game store owners would have sold Conker's Bad Fur Day for. So we are starting off in my friend's shop. Shout out to James and Gemma in Doorway to Darkness. It's near Doncaster if you guys want to go check it out. I'll link this in the description. Now James was uh, kind of added a bit more to his answer he obviously said it depends on condition it depends on whether you've got manual i get that there's a lot of factors but he did give me a ballpark figure for a boxed copy between 180 to 220 pound so again that is much cheaper than cex the next store we go to is over in yorkshire it's actually in a town called pontifract and this is my friend Adie's shop and again, I will link all of the episodes that you see to go and do some virtual shopping um, so you can kind of watch it after this. So I reached out to AD um, and he did say, he kind of said, he said the very, everybody said the same thing. It depends on condition. So again, I asked for a ballpark and he said that it would be around £200, I believe, that that was the last copy that they'd sold a standard copy you know bit of a bit of tattering on the edges etc etc you know includes a manual so again way under the 250 pounds that cex are currently selling standard copies for we're now going to go over to the retro hub shop shout out to elric um, lovely little shop just down in Staffordshire if you guys want to check it out. Reasonably new to the, um, you know, the, this store is reasonably new. He had a market store before. But Elric also said, 
200 quid is about the kind of going rate for a box copy of Conker's Bad Fur Day. So again, much cheaper. And I'd never been to this next retro game shop, but it's Revival Games. I reached out to Paul and I'm using this footage because in the back, he recently sold me a new SNES variant and he said 180. So you're looking at between 180 to 220 pound for a mint condition up, up at 220, which is still significantly cheaper than CEX. CEX, sort it out. Stop asking your marketing team to go through sold listings on eBay. Um, you need to be flexible to your market because you're not eBay. So uh, that's my message to you. Now, if you've enjoyed this episode, I would very much appreciate it if you guys could thump that subscribe button. Please leave a like rating and uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below. My name is Jenna. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll catch you in the next episode.